Now, one of the major uh, hurdles for, for implementation is the enormous workload for the radiologist. Because you should realize that just uh, yeah, in a normal, in an average Western population, only one out of 100 nodules will be lung cancer. So you have a huge, really huge number of normals. Um, you encounter the same problem in all early detection and screening programs, also in breast and in, the, in prostate. Um, all the other early detection uh, lung, um, uh, cancer programs that you have to rule out the negatives. And there are always a lot of negatives in all those programs. And uh, you will have also a substantial uh, um, number of uh, uh, false positives. So one of the, the methodology here is very important. So we had the shift from, uh, now there are different ways to measure the size of a nodule and you can do it by diameter and average diameter, but more accurate is the volume. And we proved in our European studies and we also published the European positions, the statement in the Lancet by which we um, uh, could easily prove that w when you really want to do it accurate, you need to exercise uh, volumetry. And um, volumetric measurements are, with the current software that is available on the market everywhere, is not that difficult to implement. And it uh, gives you more reliable uh, uh, data. So um, it was more or less also, uh, uh, we could prove that um, Many of the false positive, uh, high false uh, false positive rates were uh, um, were were really caused by the uh, diameter measurements that had been used in the past. So now we think with the implementation of volumetry, and we will do this in this new um, uh, European implementation study called Foreign Lung Run, and there we uh, will use volumetry and also the growth rate as an important factor to uh, uh, yeah, look for the first, for the benign nodules. So to rule out the benign nodules. And then I come to my uh, point on AI. Now, uh, AI is, of course, a kind of container, uh, has a kind of container meaning everything is AI. And so what we apply in... Um, in, in um, in, in our development is a more task-driven AI development. So we, we break down the, um, the, the, the actual decisions that a radiologist has to make when he, when he is uh, yeah, more or less uh, reporting a, um, a, a certain examination. Um, yeah, that can go up to 10 points in a, in a decision tree. And we train the AI focused, that they call it also with the narrow AI, we focus it only on one of those decisions. So one of the first decisions that, uh, that uh, the radiologist has, has to make, and that's already quite, takes quite a lot of time, are there nodules or are there no nodules? So that sounds, I think for you also, extremely simple in your ears, but that if, to rule that out with certainty, that's not, not that simple. So it takes time. Now, this simple task probably can be done and taken over by AI. And that is what we showed in that paper that you mentioned. And that has an enormous impact on the workload, which is also a very, a very uh, important uh, hurdle for further implementation. So if for example, 60 or 70% of everything that you have in, your, uh, uh, in, in, in all the cases that you are uh, screening is normal, and the AI can take that out reliably, then you end up with an extremely uh, decreased number of uh, studies that has to be uh, examined by the radiologist himself. Now, that is in a paper, and we showed with a certain, uh, and then you should take into account what kind of population you have, how many normals are there, uh, 
what is the average size of the normals if, of the nodules and so forth and so on. But taking in that account, in that particular uh, population, we could come to a reduction, I think, of uh, 86% um, workload reduction. So that, that's really high. And then the radiologist only has to do uh, about 10 to 50% of the work, what he normally would do. So that, that though in our opinion, that are the steps to that you had have, have to take to come to a real, uh, yeah, meaningful implementation of AI. Uh, 